You're listening to the WBT Podcast with Michael Lodge. Listen to all of our podcasts at www.wbtpod.com. Stay informed. Let's get started. And welcome. This is Michael Lodge. I'm glad that you've joined me on the WBT. Listen, we've been seeing a lot of videos lately about people going into Costco and buying up all the toilet paper and the water. Stupidest thing I've ever seen. Today we're going to talk about the virus and what the CD says about the virus. And let's kind of reduce this panic level. Because, gosh, we're starting to look like a bunch of fools. I'll be right back right after this commercial break. This is brought to you by Lodge Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge Co., your source for sound business and tax services. You know, it's really kind of amusing to watch all these videos that are out there. I mean, these people literally look like fools fighting over toilet paper. I have never seen anything like this. We have gone through so many viruses in the past that have killed more people than what this current virus is doing. And we never went into panic mode. We have never become scaredy cats. And I think it's because you guys are listening to too much television, too many of the rep- of the uh, politicians talking about this subject, trying to make it political. And any time they make it political, it drives people into panic. So we've got to stop this. You guys are my friends, so today we're going to go over what the CDC says about this virus. We already know that there's no vaccine right now. It's being developed. It's under construction, as they would say. But it's going to get done. So there is no vaccine at the moment to to prevent this disease in 2019, or what is called the COVID-19. So the best way to present illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus. The virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person between people who are in close contact with one another within about six feet. Through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes, (coughs) like that, (laughs) these droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. So we need to have that distance, social distance is what they're calling it now. I never knew we would ever have a description or terminology to stay away from people of about eight feet or more as social distance. Now, older adults and people who have severe underlying chronic medical conditions like heart or lung diseases or diabetes seem to be at a high risk for developing more serious complications from COVID-19, the illness. So... The best thing to do is consult with your health care provider about additional steps you may be able to take to protect yourself. But if you go to the CDC side, you will find that they have a whole bunch of things to educate you on this this, uh, virus. Now, you can take steps to protect yourself, like clean your hands often, wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after you have been in a public place or after blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing. If soap and water are not readily available, use a hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol 
60% alcohol. So make sure that when you're buying this stuff, just because it has the word sanitizer doesn't mean that it's going to sanitize you. Make sure it has 60 and above alcohol. Cover all surfaces uh, of your hands and rub them together until they feel dry. So in other words, rub that thing in. I went to communion the other day, and by the time I got from the lady who squirted me until I got time to take communion, my hands were completely uh, sanitized by doing what the CDC says. CDC. CDC says, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Don't touch your hands and mouth anyway. Just don't. It's, it's really sick. Avoid close contact. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. So if you know of somebody that's coughing and sneezing and wheezing, <laughs> has a fever, stay away from them. And if you're that person... Stay away from other people. So avoid close contact with people who are sick. Put distance between yourself and other people. If COVID-19 is spreading in your community, this is especially important for people who are at high risk of getting very sick. Take steps to protect others that are around you. Stay home if you're sick. Stay if you're sick, especially stay home. Except to get medical care. Learn what to do if you are sick. Cover coughs and sneezes. Cover your mouth and nose with tissue when you cough or sneeze or use the inside of your elbow. Throw used tissues in the trash. Immediately wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. There are rules, there are precautions that you take to to try to stay healthy during this thing. And you can do it. Wear a face mask if you are sick. If you're, if you are sick, you should wear a face mask when you are around other people. Common sense. Like sharing a room or a vehicle or before you enter a healthcare provider's office. Cover yourself with a mask if you can find a mask. If you're not able to wear a face mask, for example, because it causes trouble breathing, when you should do your best to cover your coughs and sneezes and people who are caring for you should wear a face mask if they enter your room. If you are not sick, you do not need to wear a face mask unless you are caring for someone who is sick. So you don't need to be walking around with a face mask. Clean and disinfect. I do this all the time in my office, in my home, when I get a shopping cart at the store. They now have wipes there that you can take. Clean and disinfect frequently touch surfaces daily. This includes tables and keyboards and toilets and faucets and sinks. I saw an interesting story the other day about McDonald's. And you know they have those screens now where you place your own orders, right? So when you're standing there placing that order, you're touching that screen. They did a test on those screens and they found a high amount of fecal matter on there. Which means that people are eating at that restaurant, going to the restroom, and not washing their hands. This is how sickness is born. If surfaces, if surfaces are dirty, clean them. Use detergent or soap and water prior to disinfectant. To disinfect, most common EPA registered household disinfectant, disinfect, disinfectants, wish I could talk, will work. Use disinfectant appropriate for the surface. And you've got some options there too. You've got options of diluting your household bleach. To make a bleach solution, mix 5 teaspoons to a third cup bleach per gallon of water or 4 teaspoons bleach per quarter of water. Alcohol solutions. Insure solutions has at least 70% alcohol in them. I would really suggest that you go to the to the uh, CDC website, type in the virus name, and and read it through. If you are being proactive on your health care, on taking care of yourself, taking care of the germs around you, taking care of yourself so that you're not spreading any germs, You'll do okay. This should be a common practice every single day of our life, even though we don't have this virus. You guys should be doing this. 
I think we become lax or we become busy. We become these individuals that spend so much time in the office or in the car or in the plane that we forget to take care of cleanliness in our homes and in our offices and where we're traveling. We forget. The fastest way to of, of this spreading of this disease is by not cleaning. Now, listen... A question was asked of me yesterday about letting friends into their house or loved ones into their house. If you know that they're not sick, if you know that they're not coughing and wheezing and snorting, they don't have a temperature, let them in. Now, we know that there's going to be some spreading of of this flu or cold or whatever's being around but if you have if you allow people to wash their hands as soon as they enter the house and as soon and, and if you know that they're coming that you've already disinfected everything it's a new practice we have to get into and it's not a bad practice it's a good practice if we're proactive in this we can still love the friends. We can still be friends with people. We can still love them. We can still be romantic. We just have to be proactive in the way that we deal with taking care of the health needs of you and I. Being more clean in everything that we do. If you look at third world countries, bacteria spreads very quickly because of People not being able to be clean, not being able to wash themselves and to take care of themselves. So you see a lot of viruses and disease spread very quickly. So if we are really smart, there's no need to panic. If you're into this normal daily routine of cleanliness, you will do very well. If you're in the daily routine of not being so close to people, if they're eight feet away, six feet away, and talking to them, if you need to shake hands or be personal with them, hey, all that you have to do is do a little fist bump, maybe a signs up, maybe you're doing an elbow crack, or what do they call it when you hit each other's elbows? I saw one in China the other day where they were doing feet feet bumps. <laughs> be creative. With your greetings of people. So many different ways. We just have to be imaginative. And again I use the word proactive. If we really focus on. How we're responding. And dealing with people. And our social distance. And the cleanliness of ourselves. And, the, and cleaning out. and with Destroying the bacteria that surrounds us. Every single day. Cleaning out the filters of your air conditioners in your offices a little bit more often. Maybe there's a better filter that you can use to kind of filter it a little bit better. We just have to change our lifestyle just slightly. We should be doing this every single day of our life anyway, so it should be become a routine. I know it's become a routine in my household. Because it's only me and the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of I'm kind of protected there. I do most of my mediation through video conferencing now. The only time I actually meet people is if I go to church or if I go to the grocery store or go to the post office. But I'm proactive and I become proactive. An individual that I know in, in Hong Kong doesn't believe that Americans are ready for this virus. I think it's not just being ready, but it's the ability to reach to change our lifestyles. And to do this, we have to focus on it. Again, I tell you, go to the CDC website, and they give you a whole bunch bunch of information that you can apply right now at this very moment. Honest to God, if you're out there buying toilet paper and water, you have to ask yourself how stupid that you actually look doing that. There's no need for that. 
What is toilet paper going to do? You do buy it all up so you can sell it to somebody for so much a roll? This is not going to get that bad. I really believe in the healthcare system of the United States. I believe in the CDC. I believe in the president. I believe that there are individuals in every hospital around this nation that have prepared themselves for this virus. The containment and the care of this virus. Now, once the vaccine gets going, then we'll even be in a better situation. Will it come back next year? It might. Are we going to panic again? We're going to close down the markets? We closed down the market this morning, 10 minutes after it opened because it was zooming down so quickly. Now, I have no idea what the markets are doing. My investment accounts are way down. Now, I don't blame that on the president. I don't blame it on members of Congress. I blame it mainly on the media who has overblown this and made it into a scare tactic trying to drive down the stock market. And, of course, the stock market on Wall Street fell for it and continue to do it even to this morning. We're down, way down. So let's be proactive in our health care. We can beat this thing if we all work together. We can beat this thing if we really are focused on our health care habits. And we can beat this thing on our social responses to other people. So listen, let's do it, guys. Go to the CDC website. Google it. And read it. They'll tell you how to be proactive. They'll tell you what the symptoms are. They will tell they have all that information there. Grasp that information and apply it to yourself. That is the best way that we can get through this. Now, if you're gonna make this political, then that is highly unethical. If you're gonna make this 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 virus a political issue that I have no respect for you whatsoever. And the American people catch on very quickly of what you're trying to do. Nancy Pelosi, you're very guilty of this. Very guilty. CNN, see, and all the other cable networks, even Fox News, stop trying to scare the people. Be more proactive yourself and teach people what they need to do. You can say it every single day, but you don't need to tell us how many people are dying, how many people are coming up with this. You didn't do it when we had SARS. You didn't do this when we had the swine flu. You didn't do any of that. But all of a sudden with this one, you decide to do it because it's a political and it's in the political season and it's disgusting and it's unethical. So stop it. And those of you who are hanging out at Costco trying to grab grab uh, toilet paper, stop it. You're being a fool. As I said in my prior podcast, we Americans used to have grit. Remember when the settlers, they were coming from the East Coast to the West Coast. They had to go through some hell. It was shitty weather. It was bad hygiene. I'm not taking baths for several days. They were coming down with smallpox, measles, the flu, and the flu some more, colds. They they were coming down with all kinds of different things, chickenpox. But they made it because they had grit. They stuck it out. They took care of they took better care of themselves. They they worked hard. They got the fresh air. They were still with a whole group of people in that same wagon train as it went across the United States because they had grit, they had the stamina they had this gumption, they had everything inside them that said I'm going to fight this and so what are we doing now? You're panicking and buying toilet paper how bad has America become? (laughs) but toilet paper 
How is that going to solve the flu situation? <laughs> okay. We can laugh at some stuff and we can take some things very seriously. And one of the serious things that we have to consider every single day is a life change. And that is being proactive in how we treat our health, our health, uh, uh, our, the, the way that we work on our health every single day. We know what the precautions are that we need to take. We know that we've got good information on the CDC website. And a lot of the hospitals have information on their website. We've got an abundance of information out there to teach you what to do and how to take care of your body and your health. So let's start, let's start getting it together, people. I, I hate to see American wimps. I tell you, an American wimp is so ugly. <laughs> they are really ugly fighting in the in the Costco over toilet paper. We are a great nation, people. Get it together. This is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you very soon. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. This podcast has been been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content in grits.